Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> yeah, but I've done, I've finished. Dean, I'm finished, I'm done. Wow, black. <laughs> welcome, welcome. It's Nikki Heen, an artist for uh, those of you who don't know me. And uh, you probably wondered, what are she, what, I, oh, I don't know, what is she doing? What is she doing? Um, so today, little microphone here. I'm going to use the plug-in microphone today because the uh, Bluetooth thing was a little not so flash yesterday. Okay, um, I wanted to talk to you today about an artist called uh, Peda Bulk. Some of you might uh, know of him. He uh, was a Norwegian artist. He was born in 1804 and uh, he he was a landscape artist. He, he was very fond of painters uh, like Caspar David Frederick. He was um, probably in that period of romantic painters. And uh, so there was a, a sense of uh, looking out onto a landscape of it being something of the imagination. Uh, so it's hard to describe really, but I, I think uh, um, uh, Peter Bolk, he, he grew up in a very difficult time in Norway, uh, 18, 1804 to 1879, I think. Um, 1887, sorry, 1887. Uh, he grew up in a difficult time. Norway was going through all sorts of changes then, and Politically, it was a very unstable place. It belonged to Denmark and Prussia and then was given to Sweden. So really, all through his life, he, he really struggled for recognition. He, he was an incredible man. He set up uh, funds for, to help, poor, to help the, um, poor people. And, uh, you know, so he, he, he was a humanist as well as a painter. And, you know, I'm, I'm very fond of uh, sort of his, his sort of philosophy in life. And I, th I think, uh, you know, uh, as with many things, it's, um, you, you know, you, you travel your own journey, don't you? And, you know, as you're doing research, you come across people who you, who you really relate to. And he probably suffered from the sense that, you know, he, he didn't want to really uh, change the way he painted, the way he worked to fit in with with a fashion. He didn't uh, have a style of painting, finickety paintings with all, you know, everything perfect. He, he was a, he, he really was an expressionist. And I'll show you uh, some of his work here and, and why, why I've got the, uh, they probably look a bit dark on the camera, but um, that's some of his work there, which I really like, but I want to move on to what we're going to do today and these are the things that I really love and you know they're quite modernist in in that form I think they're remarkable these are paintings it's a style he sort of developed um, and you know you look you look at these and you know you sort of sense the landscape but they're not probably what one might expect of Victor Victorian era paintings but they really capture the essence of the sea. So, you know, if you have a chance to look Peter Bulk up, I can really recommend him. Uh, so today really is about lost and found edges. And so I thought I'd do a sea painting because I'm supposed to be, I was supposed to be in Cornwall for, for these next two weeks uh, doing a, an, a residency at, at an art place. Uh, but I'm not, I'm here at home. <laughs> uh, but I'd like to carry on with some of the work that I was doing when I was looking at the sea. So I'm looking at things really like this. And uh, for those of you who've been to Ballon Glen in Ireland might recognise uh, some of these... Um, rock formations. Uh, they're basalt rock formations. They have a sort of a plane on them. The, the rock is extruded through the strata and it sits out on the top. It's kind of almost a little bit volcanic in nature. It's very sort of black and has these amazing cracks through it. So it is a fascinating place to go and study. But what I thought I would do today is I wanted to look at my uh, sort of sea landscape 
and you know have a sense of pulling out of pulling out the landscape so I'm starting with this black toned ground so that I can pull out the sense of the waves and the rocks I guess that's why I'm sort of saying it's lost and found hi Pauline lovely to see you hi Anna hope things are okay with you there uh, hi Claire lovely yes Claire so you were you were in Ireland uh, when I was on Jeff Hurst's course as well so you know you you'll remember very well these basalt rocks down by the um, waterfront there by down Patrick Heads a bit further around the corner but I just thought this is sometimes an interesting way to start start a painting and you know I've just blocked in the whole board with vine black and a little bit of burned umber and I'm going to just use a wipe and I'm going to pull out uh, you know I'm going to pull out the design first to um, just get a I'm not sure how much sky you know a sky I want on this I won't worry about the sky just at the moment but let's just pull out let's just pull out these waves and decide on the composition perhaps um, you know these rocks they they kind of come out this way and kind of have this thing uh, coming jutting out there and then this wave here behind it is also quite dark so I'll just draw that in with my finger right so you know I'll just mark in where that wave is and I'm using this linen board because I just like this sort of talky color for those of you that have seen me using this all week well or month really pretty much uh, so I'm just wiping through here so I haven't got any wax in this oil paint I wanted the uh, the paint to almost be kind of staining I'm always looking for ways that I can paint without using brushes I guess that's my that's my thing you know how can I paint this without using because I love printmaking and stuff like that so you know this this has that kind of feel and if you know the work of John Virtue who's a British artist he also has done some amazing I've got a book on his if I carry on with this I'll, I'll um, bring it next time but uh, he also has done some amazing paintings just with dark colors and pulling out and then painting white on top which is what I'm going to be aiming to do quite nice to just feel now I have got a primer on here I have got a gesso primer on this board so that I can paint over it easily later I probably if I hadn't put the primer on it might have been easier to, to wipe through I'm having to use a lot of pressure of course it's not a perfectly white board so it has a sort of a feeling of a night time <laughs> So these are these 
sort of lines that come in here. This is really a study for something that might be later and uh, then I might end up building up over this as well. So it has a almost printmaking type surface to it. Pedabolk used a board that had been primed with white paint, uh, probably quite slippery as well. love seascapes and it's nice to have a different way of you know starting them having a different feel this doesn't have to be a blank sky like what I've got on my my image is just a blank sky but we might want to just add a little sense of So maybe marking a little horizon. Okay. I'm going to reinforce some of the some of the darks using paint. So I'm really responding to my painting in front of me. I'm not. Uh, I want to make this into something that has that atmosphere of those rocks. Now I'm going to be adding cold wax into the dark. So I'm using zested cold wax there, which uh, you can buy off eBay or uh, you can get it uh, uh, if you're in Ireland, Art Spectrum. Uh, art supplies in uh, Wexford have it. He's just got it in for me because I was going to be doing some teaching there uh, uh, later on in the year. And you can also get it from Jackson's. So just depending on where you are. If you're in the States, uh, you probably have to contact them on their website or uh, have a look at eBay. Just, just with the virus at the moment, it's a bit hard to get. Um, a lot of postage is a bit tricky. So. So now I've got cold wax mixed into that vine black and I'm going to be starting to build the rocks. I'm just going to take my device off there. So I've got uh, I've got that cold wax in here. This is just for the rocks. So I can build up. Now into that cold wax I can add uh, mineral pigments now and I shall be putting a little uh, charcoal powder which is just there okay so I'm just gonna put a bit of charcoal powder into that wax
so if you are looking for it in the states you've got to uh, either go to ebay and find zest it or contact zest it give them an email send them an email from their website and they can answer your questions i should have tagged jackie into the uh, conversation here so you can see once i add that charcoal powder in you know there's a lot more body to to that paint i'm going to change the composition here because i quite like you know, i really want something quite thick here and when that dries uh, it forms a beautiful dark surface In fact, I might even add rocks here. I quite like that dark rather than it being a wave. I'm going to just make that up there. I think again, responding to your painting is sometimes what's most important. And these rocks have these wonderful sort of straight edges to them as if someone's just got a knife and cut them but it creates wonderful shapes. Let's put one, something up here as well, just because it's a little empty there. Right, so that's our rocks in. Course this is rather messy. Just wipe away the paint as you sort of want to cut into it. Leave that squeegee so you, <coughs> excuse me, you can get different uh, densities of paint doing that. So I'm just really just working a monochrome today without color, uh, just, just to explore this composition. So on another palette, I'm just going to have white, which I will just squeeze out here get rid of the black cloths and try and I'm trying to keep that as clean as possible so they can keep the white separate and I'll take a fresh palette knife right so we've got waves sort of crashing over waves tend to crash onto something and uh, just as a little bit of something on the side are there any other questions usually use ivory black never use vine black what are the differences uh, the difference between vine black and ivory black ivory black uh, used to be made from ivory black used to be made from turn the camera around uh, used to be made from elephant trunks uh, of course they don't do that anymore they make that synthetically now so uh, vine black is made from charcoal vine black so we have vine charcoal so if you want to uh, intensify a black you know using vine a uh, vine black and adding charcoal into it there's a great synergy between those two products so you know that's a that's something to think about with using blacks it's in, in itself it's a um, you know uh, a color that that could be explored just using different types of blacks we've got vine black we've got um, ivory black and we've got Mars black. Mars black is made from a sort of a pe the petrochemical industry and it's very sort of oily. So if you want that kind of black, if you want that slippery kind of black, you know, it's also very useful. Okay, so that's that. So behind me, I've got some music and I'm gonna carry on painting and talking.
If you know it, you can tell me. <laughs> a synesthetic response to the music and the painting from the sea.
said he wanted to talk. So using a piece of music as a as an inspiration for mark making um, you know finding uh, uh, rhythms and sounds in your paintings that uh, n you know just just looking at what you're making and responding to that um, you know can be a really powerful way of working sometimes you know you, you can get so much more energy and uh, contrast of surface I'm just going to bring you up a little closer. I've got to be careful because um, the camera gets set in a certain way. So I can show you. I added uh, pigment into that, and you know that will now settle into where the solvent is, and it'll dry, uh, giving a kind of well, particularly here, uh, it'll dry, leaving a very granular texture. And you know that can contrast nicely, perhaps against areas like this that can be a little more um, th with thicker paint. So working the difference between the solvent and uh, the wax, uh, dissolving uh, layers into each, you know, areas here which uh, you know are almost a little calmer, you know, coming into something you know here which is more, um, you know, a uh, bit more, can add a wave coming in there, um, a little bit more uh, textured here in the foreground, leaving, leaving, leaving this to be a bit spoken to. It's, it's, a, res it's a way of responding, it's a way of mark making and using paint. Let's see if I can bring you around this way. We can't see the painting now. Um, uh, using paint to speak. There we go. Um, using paint to speak through music. And so I'm, you know, I, I often I often do that. If I if I'm starting something and I just want to just use the power and energy of that sound. You know, what does my painting sound like? That's very very important to me. So, uh, anybody, did you say what the music was? <laughs> I can't see if you did or not. <laughs> um, anyway, it was Fingal's Cave uh, by Mendelssohn. Uh, and, you know, that idea, you know, he, he went out on a boat to look at Staffer. I actually went out on a boat to look at Staffer, but it was so rough I couldn't, <laughs> like we couldn't even get close to it. Um, but this idea of uh, ebb and flow, of lost and found, you know, explore that idea with colour, but you don't need colour. You could just do it monochrome. And sometimes just working in monochrome, you focus more on that mark and the edges of things. So, you know, that would be, um, you know, that would be something for you guys to try. All right, I'm teaching a workshop up at Lund Studios in Yorkshire. That's going to be in October, fingers crossed. It's going to be on Seascapes. I'm not going to post this uh, demo on Facebook because obviously this is one of my teaching techniques. Uh, so uh, you guys here who have seen it, um, you are the lucky ones. <laughs> so I'm so pleased you enjoyed that and uh, enjoy the rest of your day. Make the most of it. Uh, you'll never have it back again. Okay, bye for now.